Right, let's start the discussions. I have in the studio the National Nasara Coordinator of the MPP, Kamal Dean Abdullahi, and also Anthony Lupenu, he is the Greater Accra organizer of the NDC. A very big man. How are you? I'm fine by very big I, man I love the when I said big man, you looked into the sky. <laughs> big man indeed. The studio is all <laughs> top floor, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, how are you? And uh, how how was your weekend? Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, we were just receiving some mm, tragic news about uh, Castro uh, from his. Um, I think they went to have in some. I planned that road yesterday. I went to. I was in Ho. I was in the Volta region to do one of Putin's. Came down through the Senchi okay. route and all that. You know, but. It was on my way, almost getting to Accra, that I got this information that this mm. one happened. So I was down there. I was like, ah, well, what happened to us and all that? But, um, well, they are still searching. So let's hope. I believe that sometime God can do his miracle. So we cannot be conclusive on this matter until the finality is sought. Mm. Okay. Time. Yeah, I think it's a, a very sad and tragic news. Um, a year ago, uh, we lost a friend in that same area. That was uh, the current regional minister's younger brother. He also went on this same jet ski boat and then fell in. And that is, so it was about three days' time we found the body just around the estuary when it was flowing towards the sea. So this is very bad. And I think people must take caution anytime they go on this holiday resort. Uh, it's a very pathetic movie. Well, it's not that the ho holiday resorts are bad. The point is that there always needs to be caution. Yeah? Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. if you're yeah. there, you make sure you're in the yeah. right mood, the mood and you take the right precautions. Exactly. I think that's the most the important thing. We shouldn't say the resorts are bad. No, yeah. I'm not no, saying no, the no. resorts are all, all, all over. All these, over yes. these are what create revenue for many countries. Exactly. You go over. there, you see toddlers, even four years, five years children on this jet ski. And they're always in their full gear. Sometimes they fell and they, are, they, they swim. They float on the water, so I don't know why. Uh, Castro was in a vest, but according to the news, the lady was not in there. So it was a lady that fell earlier, and he also went. To, but I don't know how everything happened. The point is, nobody was there, so, so the, I'm, I'm wondering. Well, how until, like I said, until um, we we able to get the final report, yeah. we cannot actually mm. speak to this matter with this. Um, but only all we can say is to caution people yeah. and, and ask for God, to God's, say again God's that, God's interference. Yeah, very well, very well. And to say again that results are not bad. It's no. just the caution that we have to give. And of course, sometimes, you know, you can be too excited and maybe you'll be under some influence, sort of alcohol, whatever. Enjoyment comes with so many things. So you see that if you are not careful, then some of these things may carry you away yeah. and you have problems. But let's pray and hope for the best. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the president, um, they, uh, he has been speaking, and on Sunday, pres the president uh, told Ghanaians that uh, stop being pessimistic, and the story on page 17 Again. of, uh, no way, let me just read it, relax. <laughs> uh, president John Muhammad has called for single-handedness or singleness of purpose and a unity of heart and mind from Ghanaians, all walks of life for confronting challenges um, besetting the country's progress. We have a nation of uh, pessimists and this creates a national psyche that no matter what we do we cannot make our lives better uh, well he was speaking at a national thanksgiving and prayer service at the holy spirit cathedral uh, the president stressed that it was only with a positive frame of mind that the challenges facing the country um, could be overcome well let me say a very good morning to our cherished viewers and also good morning to you as well you did extend to us but we did not um it's very interesting the president has revisited this um, whole call for us not to be pessimist, but rather be optimist. Um, yes, I will start off by saying that there's a saying in English which says that your attitude determines your altitude. Okay? Now, when it comes to the local parents in my language from the Dagbang area, that is the Dagomba area, it says that, that when you see, I'm trying to literally translate what they say, that when you see and observe testicles of a man or, or, or of, a, of a man, mm, you'll be able to tell whether it will become hernia or not. It will develop into hernia or not. So you see, when you call us not to be pessimists, it is the way you take off. It is the way you position yourself. It is the way you go about managing down the line from five years now, okay, and where you've taken us to.
that would also determine whether actually determine whether we should be pessimists. Well, five years. The president has only been in office since, uh, since 2013, I believe. 2009, he was the vice president. And he told us clearly. Okay, you're counting from those uh, days. Absolutely. He told us clearly that he was given a chunk portion of the work by late President Mills to do. So if anything went wrong, he should also be held responsible. Five years down the line today, going to six years, we still don't have hope. And the president who is supposed to be the manager, in fact, the overseer of our economy, the, 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 who is supposed to be competent enough to come and tell us that, give us hope and everything, you are coming to tell us six years down the line that we should not be pessimists, but rather be optimists. I don't know. I mean, uh, we can't continue being, you know, optimists in vain. We cannot do that. Frankly, governance is about practicalities. It's about coming, it's about realities. What is on the ground? Come out and tell us. You have always told us that oh, there are challenges. There are this. The next moment you see a minister coming to tell us, we have done X, Y, Z. We have done this. A whole lot of stories. We are not too sure who is telling us the right thing. And if you have been charged by Ghanaians to do what is right for them to be comfortable, only for you to every day come out and say, don't be pessimist. Don't do this. Even to the extent of saying that some of you, even if we construct road with gold, you will not see us do, you will not say we have done something good. This is the arrogance with which we are we, we, What we are arrogance are you talking about? The president has said that, and yesterday, uh, precisely if you listen to him, yeah. um, he said that, well, the, the country is endowed with enormous uh, resources yeah. for which Ghanaians also can take advantage of, yeah. and political stability and peace and the natural resources we have and the hope we have for ourselves should give us an indication that we're a country that need to be proud of ourselves. Um, it, it, it mustn't take the president to tell us that we are endowed with resources. We know that. We know that. From 1957, since we got independence, till date, we are aware that Ghana has enormous resources. And? Governance upon, government upon government ought to what? Manage the resources that we have well. Today, you are in the driver's seat. You have been given the mandate, like I said earlier on, to manage the resources for us. If you come again to tell us that, yeah, we have resources, therefore we should be optimistic, then you have said nothing. We can have resources and mismanage the res those resources. And that is what we are seeing now. The mismanagement, the gross ineptitude in the society that is causing a very serious decline in our living standard is what we are worried about today. That's a problem. That is causing the gross the falling standard of our living, uh, falling of our living standard is what we are worried about today. Now, the only person we have hope in or on is you. After God, we know you are the manager. You have to do it. Only for you to come and tell us that no, we ought not to be pessimists. We have to be optimistic. When in fact we are not seeing anything on the ground to show that you can change anything. Mm. We sit down today. Our debt ratio is rising to 60% GDP. Gradually. It's almost there. The opposition will raise red flags even before it got to 50%. You said, hey, no, there was no danger. Today, we are closer to that place. We sit down today. We are not paid statutory payments that will ensure that it will go to cushion people. And there's a problem. We sit down today and contractors are threatening not to work again. Oh, we discuss contractors. Okay, we do that. A, a I'm, nice just, I'm just trying to give all these um, you know, is, uh, issues that are affect, affecting us. Now, we sit down today, and you go to the market, and prices of goods and services skyrocketed daily basis. Now you tell us that we shouldn't be pessimists, and you are in the driver's okay. seat. What I, are you I, talking I, about? I, I do understand all that, and very soon I'll bring Anthony to, to also come in. But uh, precisely why the president thinks that looking at all the steps that have been taken it is crucial and important that uh, Ghanaians as we are we also tend to give hope having some level of introspection made and and, and think that well there's a way for forward for us and not to be too pessimistic just because of the sake of politicking um, well I am not sounding political I'm sounding very very real here and very objective but my brother even here uh, Tony will allude to the fact that yes whatever is happening to us today i don't know of you because you may not be able to speak to the issue but the whatever is happening to us today it is not going on well at all for us things are really bad and that is what we're talking about we don't want to sound political at all we are saying that look Ghanaians are out there crying every now and then there's a problem let me see roland look at this issue you come and tell us that you want to build schools for us 200 and uh, whatever, uh, a quite number of secondary it, it, schools. 200. 200 secondary schools. schools or so. Then, the next moment, we see billboards all over the country 
telling us that these are the schools we're going to build all over, and we don't know how much that cost. The next moment, we are told that now we are going to World Bank to get a loan to come and build those schools. But, the, but, but you see, no. I, I want, is I want, that not the purpose of governance? You don't necessarily need to have <laughs> money at hand before well, you say, well, this is the foundation I'm going to build. You just need to have a plan. Now, you are the media. You no, know how much a billboard costs in the city? No. A very huge billboard? Well, there's, it, it, and you have all that all it, over. It's something wrong. It, it's something wrong. At least, you see, you, that's it's something wrong. Give us one secondary school to it, show that this, you have come. You are it's, to it, something. It's, something, do it's, this. It, it's something wrong. Mm. Is, it, is it wrong to have a billboard for a year? That, very, very wrong. Action speaks louder than words. Let's see you acting. Don't come and tell us that, look, this Anthony, is your take on this very subject. The president saying that Ghanaians need to stop being pessimistic. Thank you, Roland, and good morning to your viewers. I think um, the president call is the right call to all the people of this country. And my brother here, coming from the New Patriotic Party, is exhibiting the same thing. You know, for MPP, if it is not that party and its people running the affairs of this country, nothing good should come. Uh, this country belongs to everybody, belongs to all of us. These calls are made several times, and like any president at a particular time, when you get a national f platform to speak to the people of Ghana, you encourage and motivate Ghanaians. And this is not any bad call. Yes, you can say uh, we don't need a president to remind us of the resources and whatever we have. Yes. You are looking up to the president to show leadership in governance, to bring everybody on board, to make sure we strive to the better heights. But he is tempted to make this course due to certain things that goes on. <laughs> as a country or as a government machinery running, and any steps you take, you see people twatting efforts. Who are twatting whose efforts? Very well. The president's efforts have been twatted? By who? Is he... Oh, you mean he's being criticized? Criticism is welcomed, mm. but unwarranted and unreasonable criticism. That's it makes... That's it, it, it sends those are obstacles? It, it sends... Are, are, are they obstacles? Yes, yeah, sometimes. It, it sends some signals out there as if the government machinery is so hopeless that has nothing to do for the people of this country. You know, just last week, look at how we uh, embarrass ourselves in this country just with a minute uh, a word being used to contract a loan. Which is what? And people think that what, is what, a hopeless what, situation. What is no, sir, that is a hopeless situation. What, what are you referring to? Yes. If you have <laughs> state-owned, uh, not, not even state-owned, you have, you have a platform of, an uh, army of platforms. In this country, we say the media is the fourth realm of what? Governance. And if you have larger section of the media trying to portray to the whole world that the government of Ghana has contracted $156 million loan to purchase part. What are we sending out there? Is that a kind oh, of country you're talking about the, san the, the sanitary part issue? <laughs> yes. The <laughs> component is $15.6 I believe. Fifteen point six million for, for Not for part. Yeah, you know, no, no. Not for, not for no, part. Not for, for monetary. Uh, for some evaluation, other monitoring, evaluation, and, and parts, as well as as well yeah. as the you are not running this program, my brother. Thing. You are not I, running this program. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah. now, now, you, you, you I'll get. I have my time. But <laughs> did you people take the time to educate Ghanaians to that extent? But only running. You mean, it you mean this very part. platform or or no, other media? I'm, I'm, us, I'm using the media in your your generalizing. Yes, yes, and it is so bad that you 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 can't see what we are trying to tell the people of this country or the outside world. Now, you see the largest opposition party organizing press conference using their minority in parliament to tell the people of Ghana. And you see women who some months or some years back were calling on government to look into that same direction. Elizabeth Ajiman of Ofori Krum made a call in 2011 in this same direction. How government should look at cushioning ladies in the uh, you mean young girls. secondary and in, in, yes, in second cycle schools. second cycle institutions in this same provision of part. So today, personality of such nature 
stand on the floor of parliament and make this call. So mm -hmm. it's so hurting when you see this direction. But you know, the president is the president of this country. He has all the mandate to always encourage people. I think this call at the national time giving is encouragement. He is not reminding anybody of what we have. But as and when he has this platform, he's always bound to make a call that will encourage everybody. I think uh, Nanado was in that church service yesterday, and other political leaders were also there. So he's just calling on whatever mind you have, whatever ideas you have. You don't need to become a president of the nation before you can exhibit leadership to your fellow friend who is leading to make sure we strive this country. So he's just making a call. Whatever minds Nanado has today, you should put it on board. Yes, some will also say he has made several calls. But when you make calls uh, partisanly and not out of patriotism, mm. people will not take it. Okay, I know you want to yeah. uh, have a Respond. bite on this very uh, subject. Uh, but we're taking a break when we come back. We'll have a lot more uh, of the discussions going on. We'll be talking about the contractors who now say government owes mm. them in excess uh, a lot of money. And as a result of that, they are not going to continue working. And uh, that's a huge worry for communities that have roads that need to be constructed. Some even don't have roads that have even started at all. So we'll be discussing all that. You're still watching AM Talk on the AM Show. Well, so, uh, Ms. Abdullah, yeah. you want to react to yes, it, but just uh, as, as you do the reaction, uh, road contractors suspend work to demand payment of $184 million um, Ghana cities owed them by government and we're talking in excess of about 2,000 members of the Progressive Road Contractors Association and the Association of Road Contractors they've suspended work and these are all due to and due delays in the payment of their certificates some of which have been uh, in arrears for the last two three four five years yeah that's 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 the reality and that's true and it's sad okay. but before I get to the subject matter on this contractors issue let me first of all want this my good friend sitting here you know understand and appreciate how incompetent they are in governance what's the meaning of that um I, I would like to go he spoke to an issue saying that most people in this country twat the effort of the president i never use the word no most. you use the word twat then you, and you even as a please, please, I didn't say please. most people. You said well, you said some people or whatever. No way. Yeah. Toward the effort of the president. That's the MPP. When he makes an attempt to achieve, then I, I, you know, in my submission earlier on, I said we have someone in the driver's seat. We have someone who is supposed, who has been given the mandate, in fact, constitutionally and legitimately, to handle the affairs of this country. Who has the power? When you go through the constitution of Ghana, the executive has enormous power than anybody. Mm -hmm. That people even want to say that we are, we are running kind of a, 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 an executive kind of governance where even parliament and other organs are not, uh, you know, um, powerful at all to do anything. And I'm saying that if you have all these powers and you still sit down to complain, to say that people are trusting your effort, then what are you doing? That means grossly you have shown to us that you are incompetent, your ineptitude is at its highest peak, and therefore you ought not to have been in governance at all. That is what you are telling us. And it has just been confirmed by my good friend here that Ghanaians should know that people or the president says that they have been trusting his effort to make good things in Ghana. I don't know who he has not been able to tell us. Now he mentioned that the mere usage, that the mere usage, I'm trying to quote him, of a word which he couldn't even mention. And finally you helped him and he said sanitary parts. Okay? Uh, in, 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 seeking, in, in a proposal seeking for a loan from World Bank has created a hue and cry among Ghanaians all that. Why not? Why not? Why can't we cry when we have pertinent issues, teaching and learning materials lacking in our schools, and you are talking of a policy that you can't even sustain? But we have set, set, uh, 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 components of the loan, of the, of the overall loan. I have gone through it. 15.6 million. And out of the 15 point something million, that is supposed to be for monetary evaluation and the sanitary parts. Then we have also 5.2 million for scholarship for needy students. And then we have you some know what? for the Roland, construction of... Uh, absolutely. Schools and all that. Roland. The construction is about 130 million. I went through, I read the whole document. You understand? I am saying that. First of all, who did not inform Ghanaians well? The Minister of Education. You wanted to discuss policies that will affect education. You went to Parliament, you submitted the proposal to Finance Committee and not even Education Committee. 
So it was even passed at the blind side or on the blind side of the education committee. Oh, but that it's, is one point. It's a financial agreement. Two. It's a Agree. financial agreement. Agree. And in Parliament, Before. according to the regulations, yes. unless the speaker, yeah. unless the speaker, very well. That is, if mm -hmm. it, it, if at his own discretion or it is recommended to him, mm. he may have another committee that has any link to whatever agreement that mm. is that is being looked into by a certain committee. Well, you the, know what? In it, it, if it's a financial agreement, well, I agree. solely we have the financial committee. That uh, we take a look at. You know what? In Parliament, we have someone heading government business, who is the majority leader. Okay, government business. They say, I believe that he is supposed. You understand? To know. To know what is happening. And say that, look, let's first of all get this committee also scrutinized in. us because they have the what? The expertise. Having finished, we can push it to the financial committee to now do whatever we want to do. So we are saying that you let the people who are supposed to contribute. They could have told you that, look, sanitary pass is not sustainable. I'm telling me, the lay person sitting at home, know that you cannot sustain such a policy. <laughs> Girls are around. You do. Are you telling me that every month, I don't know how many parts you are going to give to a lady for throughout the year. I don't know how many, is it, is that kind of thing. I don't know how you're going to monitor them as to who is not in her, her time, who is in her time. I don't know how you're going to do this. It's really a serious matter. I'm saying that you have a gender ministry, and that gender ministry could look at a way of trying to improve the hygiene standard of the woman. That is excellent. But if you inculcate it in our educational reform, I, I really don't get so you it. Think so it's, I think it's, it's a misplaced priority. It's a misplaced priority completely. <laughs> we have got other pertinent issues and not to dwell on contractors. Now contractors, over 2,000 of them not paid and they're crying. I have very good friends who are contractors. They keep calling me every blessed day come out. Because you're in government? This. No, I'm not in government. We uh, keep talking. So why would they keep calling you? No, telling me, lamenting. The way they're suffering, banks are after them. They've gone for loans. They can't pay. And they've gone to do this way. Do you know what? This even schools that we're talking about. Tony will confirm it. You people were going around looking for contractors who will come and then what? Pre-finance the project of the building of the schools. When, in fact, when the contractors, some of them rushed to pay they said, mm, we are not even sure when the money is coming, where is the money coming. We are even owed that much. That thing did not work again. After cutting the sword around East Tain region, we never heard anything again. A black one came to make a lot of noise about it. It's fine. So I am saying the contractors actually, they must actually be listening to by the president. Wherever you are going to get money to help them, try to be sensitive to their plight. They are really suffering. You know it. You call us, you say you have contracted rules, you've done what, you've done what, have you paid them? Okay. You've not. Point. So please. Today you seem very hyped up. Yes, Let yes, me just yes. cool yes, you people down. Are not, uh, um, the, uh, Tony, we have the first vice um, president of Daspruka, that is the Progressive Road Contractors Association, uh, Hamon Labi, who's coming forward to say that uh, the road sector is in indeed crisis. And if government um, allowed the prevailing condition to continue, many rules will deteriorate, as was the case in the 1970s. And according to the rules and construction sector, employs about 500,000 labor made up of drivers, engineers, drivers, lab laborers, surveyors, etc. And uh, with this non payment, it's also getting some of the contractors out of, out of business. Well, that's what he said. I, yeah, I, I haven't verified. I think it. the call from the uh, broker. It's a legitimate call, yes. The, the, you mean the contractors? Yes. Uh, many contractors are being owed by government. Mm. Uh, but uh, perhaps, you, the, perhaps you live in an area where your roads are good, so you I, don't get I to live in a very deplorable area. Okay. Bunkatamansu has no tar roads, you know. Our roads are very, very bad. Even in this rainy season, all the gravel roads are very, very bad. You need to struggle through uh, holes to come out of your home and it's very uh, unpleasant but it doesn't make the situation hopeless uh, government day in day out is making payments to contractors but it's like when you you, you do a normal job you mm. you you incur debts and you must make sure you subscribe those debts so the call it's a right call. I think government is also listening widely and is going to make all efforts to make sure payments are done. So I would just uh, encourage or urge them to at least give some room for the minister to work around I mean, to make sure things uh, are, are taken care of. But you see, with my brother here, um, I think. He's doing the best he should do to save his sinking party. 
<laughs> the MPP has really sunk, yeah. and they need to have these platforms to continue talking to. Uh, Tony, you can do better. They, you are, can do better. they are making any inroads to the people of this country. You can do you better, see, Tony. Uh, you can Ghana is not just a country that was born today. We have traveled a long way, and governments have come, governments have gone. People are seen what government. What is happening today are not things that uh, did not happen some years back. But as and when the country is uh, traveling, we all need to make sure we, we cushion the system. That is why the president is always telling Ghanaians, let's come together. Let's put our minds, our hearts, and be patriotic to the core. So for me, what is pertinent to you as an opposition party leader may not be pertinent to me in government. I am in the driving seat. What I feel is good for the people of this country today and that's is, what, is what we will do to make sure people are relieved. You know the MPP. And that's sanitary part. Mr. MPP, Adela, stop heckling MPP is an urban party, and that is what is making them <laughs> always lose election. They don't know when they lost 2012. So, so you're, so you're saying that you are developing the rural areas and living urban areas. Not that you are. You see, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't get your, your a proper your, uh, policy which they don't mm. see relevant is what will kill them. MPP in 2012 went to as a in the environment. Mm. And we're campaigning on gas shortage. Why the people there don't even really know what gas shortage is? So they were looking at them. Ah, what are these people talking about? You see, when you are campaigning, you must devise strategy <laughs> everywhere in the message. But for them, everything. Okay, let me ask you and a they, question. They, is, it, is, it about, is, is it about strategizing to win elections? Very good. Or making sure that you provide overall facilities that are needed by the citizens? Excellent. Or because you feel that, well, the, so, so now it means that you are doing... Uh, um, Developmental consolidation and focusing on areas that need it better where the votes can come from. Is, is that what is that what the you're package? Saying? The 156 million dollars package mm -hmm. is not for only rural sectors. Well, I do understand it's for the whole country. I'm teasing but my question that, out of the argument. In, in that package, there is some that will go to subscribe or to mm -hmm. make sure the poor are lifted above board. And you, and you think that they are, uh, the MPP is not, they, they will not, see not the, sensitive to, they will to, not see to the, the needs of the, the sensitivity of that one? Really? They are always looking up to how to create and cushion themselves as an elite and liberal uh, class. Before we, we look at, we say we care for you. Don't forget, these were some of our slogans. We mm. care for the people. Mm. Okay. How do you care for people when their roads have not been constructed? Um, um, even some, I remember the youth of Ashaiman had to undertake a demonstration before the contractors uh, came to uh, tip, I think, heaps of sand three, four times. They leveled the place, now the rains have set in. They have threatened again that they will undertake uh, another another mm -hmm. demonstration. Yeah. Then they were talked to by the municipal chief executive. Yeah, is he Raymond? They've, they've cooled tempers, Roland. but Raymond, then they, they are Ro so Roland. threatening that they'll go back onto the yeah. streets. Roland, when you run in governments and you you you, 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 you lapse on uh, communication, perceptions and suspicion setting, and that has been one of the things that is affecting we as a government. If we continue to educate and give the right communication to people, those kind of things will not be okay. Yeah. And that is why What's I always... What's your point? Uh, your point is what? Yes, because you, your point? you, like the municipal chief executive, it's your duty to make sure the right information gets to the people, the drivers, the, the citizenry, to know at what stage this section of the road will be completed. But when you sit back, and you don't do anything. The people will take the law into their own hands and go on the rampage. And that was what happened then. Because there was total lack of communication. The people will go to the municipality and it's like he's out of touch. He doesn't even know he himself will be complaining bitterly as to when the, even the contractor So you're saying your own appointed chief executive is incompetent. Is that what you're saying? It, it is, it's not about in, incompetent. It's about some of them not being proactive. And for me, so your appointed <laughs> chief executive is not proactive. Then why appoint him then? <laughs> well, you see, this is appointments or election, you go to parliament, <laughs> there are more than half of parliamentarians 
who are nothing to write home about. But the people vote for them because of maybe <laughs> one or two things so they do the in their is really same one or two things they do in their uh, <laughs> anyway. uh, uh, constituencies. Mm. So people think, oh, this man should go. But he gets to parliament. The real core of the job of legislation, he has no tact to it. Okay. Well. So somebody will come up <laughs> as a very nice person. People will recommend him. Oh, let's give this person the mandate to serve as a minister. He gets there, and the IQ to deliver becomes a problem. But it's a collaborative So you don't effort. have the people to execute the jobs it's for not you. About, no, we have, we have You're more talking than, about IQs of people. We right? have thousands That's why I'm and one people the who can... I'm only asking Oh, yes. We have thousands and one people who can deliver. And I think everybody that has been appointed by the president <laughs> has, <laughs> the man, uh, has the flair to deliver. Oh. If it is not there, it is the duty of whoever or the people around to make sure you guard him. I don't get your sure. point. Because oh, you're saying somebody uh, is appointed by the president. The yes. person is not proactive. <laughs> you're saying the person has a flair. That, 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 that is why he was said, get out of well, power. Mm. That's why he was taken out of that office. A new person has come. Well, so and the, roads, the roads are, are yes. they and, worsen. And that new person is you, always in touch. That is why the situation is under control. Um, you, see, you know the contract yeah, well, I know I know you want to react to him, but yes. the contracts okay. are also uh, pretty much worried about the current depreciation of the city because city. for example they would have to buy butamen yes. and, and other raw uh, 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 yes, other raw materials yeah. from mm -hmm. from abroad. Well. And that costs a lot of money. Yeah. Machinery. Um, and machinery and all that's what I said. Um it's it's a worry. You see, that's why you said the whole situation in Ghana, as ah. the accounts would say, a pasca. Everything is a shambles. The shambolic manner in which this economy is being handled is affecting everybody. I was in his own rhythm. Volta Rogen, Pecky. Precisely. A village. He's mentioning a place, the hinterland where they are developing. Go and see the level of the level of despondency, the abject poverty that people are living in. <laughs> Talk of poor poor policies. <laughs> The national health insurance scheme that we have today is an excellent example of pro-poor policy. That you have everybody in Ghana subscribing to it and going to hospital. And it's not been consolidated. They've, they've increased the number of people. Just a it. minute. Now, again, we're talking of pro-poor policies. We are talking of the bar system that we brought to get commuters from the villages to the town to sell their produce, <laughs> which we brought. And a mass transit <laughs> company is importing more buses. Absolutely. <laughs> now, we're talking of pro-poor policies, uh, captation uh, grants which was extended to the villages where primary schools enrollment had increased through poor policy. That's also improving. And we are talking of proper policy, life, livelihood empowerment project, which gender ministry today has adopted to help local and women in the rural areas to develop their work. This is all coming from the good governance of MPP we're talking about. You don't sit here, you have the mandate five, down, five years down the line, and you tell me your proper policy is to buy sanitary pads for people. Oh. That is exactly what you're telling me. You, you what an insult to our woman. Okay. You know but, what? But, 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 what's but, an insult about this? Now, now listen. See, before, see, before, before you go on to that, yes. this very trajectory about yes. whether a policy is pro poor or not mm. and is an insult to mm. a certain section of the population. I will explain why. Do, do, do you agree <laughs> that it, it, it has been reported after consistent research mm -hmm. that, well, there are a certain number of young girls in second cycle schools who, according to the survey, yeah. don't go to school at a particular time in the month just because perhaps they are within that period of that the month? Period. Um, and well, so as a I result, that perhaps this, 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 this is I also necessary at the same time. Even though we, had, we have other pertinent... Before I advance my submission, Please. I would have so much difficulty with this survey that has been conducted. Mm -hmm. First of all, a survey has been conducted. Most of us are looking at reality on the ground. I come from a very remotest part of this country, which is somewhere Zhang in the Nantong district. Nantong constituency. I mean, uh, Nantong, Savulugu Nantong district, as, it, as you say. And when you go there today, the level of poverty is so high, but then it is very difficult to tell if this lady at the age of 14 or at the age of 15 does not really know personal hygiene as to how to keep herself when she's in her time. Because this is a, a preserve, a preserve for our parents, our mothers who are taking care of us. And let me tell you, we have parent-teacher association in our schools. And you know why? It is not just for anything. It is because the teacher and the parent have a role to play in developing the child. And I am telling you that when a, a woman is approaching the adolescent age, or the age at a time where she starts getting this, the mother even starts telling you, look, if you see this sign, this is what happened. Now, no matter how rural the place is. Mm. So you see, some of these sanitary pastors, indeed, 
I will not say that it's not hygiene oriented or it's not good. It's good. It's a, it's but we, we shouldn't over exaggerate the survey. Let's go down and see. Let me tell you, go to any village today, hold on. Do a survey, conduct a survey, try to get your reporters to talk to people and then randomly ask them how they keep themselves and the girls will tell you how much they do and whatever they do to keep themselves. So this survey that girls cannot go to school because they are in their time, I disagree with it strongly. Mm -hmm. I, do, I don't agree with it. Because the reality on the ground is that there is no lady at the age of 14 today throughout the, the country who doesn't know that this is how to keep myself when it's time when the time comes they have things to improvise even though it's not too good we're we talking about however they have a way today that they have been educated by parents that this is what they have when you come today to tell us that sanitary pass is the main proper policy for you then you are telling me that our parents don't even know what they're doing they don't even know that my child at age of 13 or 14 ought to be hygienic okay now we get it's your serious. points. Think, now we get, of we get your points. Uh, the question I asked again, yes. you have no address. Yes, I, I, your question on the contractors, the yes. depreciation of the city. Mm. Yes, it's true. It's a worry. And it's not only affecting contractors alone. My, I, my community, for instance, the Zongo communities, most of the business women there go to Togo, Benin, Nigeria to buy this chain, scooper, and material, shadow materials, and all this. They change, they deal with in the forex market, have to change money to go. Today, most of them are rendered jobless. I'm telling you, Why? the Hajis are rendered jobless. They Why? can't travel Why? because of depreciation. They cannot. You see, when they go and come, the capital at hand can no more change better money for them to go and buy any goods and come back. So they are forced to sit at home and squander everything, and they render jobless by the incompetent and ineptitude nature of this government. Uh, mm. your, 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 your words are just uh, yeah, a uh, bit harsh. Uh, not harsh. Good at. So, no, no, it's, it's, it's good at West. Roland, it's true. It's, the truth is that the city continues <laughs> sinking. Day by day, but we've had efforts. But, 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 but we've had efforts made by the Bank of Ghana, the mm. Ministry of Finance, just to stem the tide. Oh, so you and call this 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 intervention by Bank of Ghana an effort that there should, there should not be dollarization? You just the mere talk of dollar. Look, Doctor Wampa has cost us a lot. He should even be sacked. The governor of Bank of Ghana, frankly speaking, he, sh he shouldn't be there. So I have to sit right now. So your, the a, a Bank of saying? Ghana sit down and they can repatriate. They can fly $3.5 million when we have no dollar in our You're market. talking about the Black Stars. Yes, of, that was. all this goes into physical policy management. Physical policy monetary management is all part of it. And I'm saying that if a Bank of Ghana can sit down and you have banks that can transfer money on cards to them and let them enjoy their booty, you can't do that. And only for a Bank of Ghana to sit down and be able to dole out 3.5 million of scarce cash of dollar, which is rendering our businessmen suffering, to fly to Brazil and pay another fare of 500,000 for a jet to go, about $4 million, and you say there's no dollar in the system. Is it so? Oh, I just, it's crazy. I don't really don't know what to say. Mm. Frankly, I'm short of money. Okay, so, so ah. Mr. Dupan, now we have to find some solution to the problem of the contractors. And... It, it means that some resolution needs to be found for the current on pass. And they've been complaining for a number of months now, if I remember. I think uh, the issue is not about government not having enough money to pay the contractors. Government has? Government have money to pay oh, contractors. Sure. But Wait, I yeah. think the bureaucracy in the system. You see, sometimes <laughs> people do, somebody will do a road work in a, somewhere in the northern part of the country. The system of preparing these documentations mm. to raising certificate, getting down to ministry, all these things. So I will always ask the ministers to be up and doing, to make sure they call on their urban roads directors, the regional directors to fast track this system. So that, as a, because the thing gets to road fund and it goes through a system of bureaucracy. Mm. And this will the money would uh, go along with to the bridge uh, like I, I i use one one million to construct a road today and the processing takes three months then when you pay me it will not be the same and the system too is not all that stable so i will plead that our leaders should look at the system very well and make sure they are in contact with people now you as a station today, you don't need to go to Nanton to do the, a research on this thing. Just to remember to class our schools. If the media today goes there, the head teacher or her, uh, mistresses in the, these schools will tell you the number of female students who doesn't attend school in a week. 
Because of sanitary pass. Yes, because they will report a sick. Mm. When a girl, we, we've, we've that, okay. all been in the secondary school. I was sponsored that house. this particular report. You see a particular I, time, a number of female students taking us, they are going home, we are sick. Well, I'm just sponsor because of if you can send a journalist. So I'll send me, a journalist. I'll please, sponsor whatever course it takes please, to go and do this research. Please. This Nasara movement is over there. Let's calm down on it. Oh, please. Hmm. Please. So for me, for me, I don't think the situation is so bad as they are doubting the research, how scientific it is, how reasonable it is. For us as a government, hmm. we have seen a light there and we want to touch the life of people there. If the MPP is so, it's not sensitive to that policy, we know how it is affecting girl child education. And girl child education is. A way to so, so, the so, life of so we have 10,400 young girls yeah. who will be touched by this. And they, country where they are those who have been affected. <laughs> well, for now, so, that is what is entailed in that policy. They, they don't go to school regularly. Not that they don't go to uh, school regularly, but their lives are, is being affected because you take yourself out of classroom for me four or five days. So they don't go to school regularly yes. within that part of the Yes. Do you so, have to observe the, the we, law? You see, the loan talks of 10,000 young girls who are affected by this, they are, by their risk. Yeah. Again, 400. the same the same proposal talks of 10,040 10, students again. Who will need 40. Who will need scholarships mm. to be paid mm. for them to go through their second cycle um, mm. education. So needs. I don't know why 10,000 no, 10, girls, 10,000. You see, it cannot be a mere coincidence, though. I don't, I just look will at you, very well. Will you be part of the party? You have told me that 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 you have told you have told me you like numbers. So when you see numbers, then you get curious. That's a problem. All right. No, so now, now Tony, we, we have to end the discussion on this very subject. So, uh, so we're, we're hoping that government can do something about the, yeah. the concerns of the contractors. Hmm, exactly. But, but, yeah. but we have uh, Nanado who is going to file his nomination today. Uh, as a high point for the MPP, uh, because we, we well, had Alan Chairman yes, who also strolled into the compound of, of the MPP the last week. Yeah. Um, uh, the pain setters of true democracy in Ghana has always been the MPP. Pain setters of true democracy in Ghana. And I repeat, you know, we, we, we agree that we would like everybody to come on board. We want you to come, you, prove your prowess. Let the delegates <laughs> speak and tell us that this is the person we want to bring. You but see, this business already. about my brother sitting here and telling me, let's go for this, bring this candidate, otherwise we will not, you, ah. will, you will not win this election. Our business is not, 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 not for us not to win. Anyway, uh, have I no. said anything about your candidate? I, 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 you mean his party, that's what I know what is happening. He knows what I'm talking about. No insinuation, I think that Nanado filing today is wonderful, is good. I am an executive, of course, as an executive, so supposed to be we are supposed to be very you neutral. Are never neutral. We are working hard to ensure that the party mm. gets a formidable he's not candidate he supports for 2016. These people are never neutral. Well, don't mind him. You look at the demeanor of the oh, room me, when the people file. Allow that me. People. We have, we have look have, at the demeanor to the one to end this program. Let me be able to. You're hating him. So I'm saying that today being the 7th of July, today being Monday, Today being the seventh month of the year, Leonardo is going to, as it were, file. Yes, well, it's good for us, and we are only praying that all the candidates, as it were, as they file, we pray for them, and then we see, we say, may the best person win. You see, with his so-called uh, neurologist analysis, <laughs> shows you clearly where he's not in this context. What do you mean? So for me, oh, it's so pathetic that national leaders, leaders. Why are you trying to pin somebody? No, 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 if somebody sits in a studio and say. A seventh month, seven days, uh, a oh. Monday, which is so. But he's good. not said. Did you say? It he just said it. What? He just said it. I said today being the seventh day of the month is good for today being the seventh and month. And another is it's Monday and he's filing. Fine. That is what he has chosen to do. No, 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 That's no. all I said. Don't, I did not say that. This cannot okay. tell you whether I support whoever. We are not is supposed to support anybody. No, no. And I have not come out to say I support for, anyone. I wish I wish the MPP well, and I hope after all these candidates have filed they will restructure themselves as national leaders because from the one they entered office, they goofed. And they are goofing <laughs> every day. I'm just praying that after all this filing mm -hmm. and the campaign start by the individual candidates, the national leader will sit, strategize and see how they combat this uh, con and get Congress a better and make sure and sanitary pass. they put and their house in order because for me, no matter who they put out in 2016, there's hey. no way Ghanaians are looking for MPP.
again. <laughs> no matter the crisis we have entered <laughs> as a government, mm -hmm. that has made our machinery so shaky that anything or all our policies are not in, in uh, not reaching the right conclusion we are seeing. We are very hopeful. That, that you can steal the election. This, you can rig it. Oh, please, please. This is <laughs> not going to be the end of this, this time. Energy. We are this going to work are around to make sure we see... So this time we are weak. We make sure our promises start to base. And then 2016, we'll go to the polls okay. and make sure these people are, are never voted for. Because MPP, MPP as of today, with all the challenges and the crisis we are having, they have not offered one solution to how they will combat That's the situation true. when they are in That's power. If they were in power today, and this... Is in their face. They, they don't have any solution. For so for me, I don't know what they are I'm talking sorry, about. I'm sorry, he's taking all your time. So yeah. 30 seconds. Um, uh, yeah, uh, spoken uh, simply, much. what I would just say is that yes, um, going forward, Ghanaians need good governance, and good governance is no friend. Incompetence is no friend to good governance. We can never have good governance if we don't get the right people. He sat here to tell me that the president has appointed some less proactive people to be DCs, don't, MCs. Don't, just don't, 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 and you don't, even interrogated don't, him. Don't, if don't, the one don't appointing them, them no why is he appointing them? We are saying that I said if someone you know, who you and said, that person has been taken out of You that said office. that the president has appointed please, less please, proactive please, people please, to please, be in please. office. This and we are saying that yes, the person who is the driver's seat you are supposed to have the best person. You are always good at So it means incompetence is too high. You have said it here. I didn't say it. You appointed incompetent people in government. Thank you. You are always good at it. You have said it. I didn't say it. He said the president has appointed less people. I have never said My speaking. guest in the I've studio, never, the gentleman in the <laughs> black, uh, Kamal Din Abdullahi, he is the national Nasara coordinator <laughs> of <laughs> the MPP. <laughs> and thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you so yes, much, Roland. His position takes care of the Zongo communities in Ghana. We know we have an initiative currently by the and government. And the communities uh, from, uh, coming okay, from the north by, as well. By, uh, called, Most. is it the Zongo initiative? Zira. Zira. Oh, okay. <laughs> now uh, we have Anthony Nukpenu, who is also the uh, regional Zumbi secretary Dynan of the you. NDC and the Greater Accra region. Uh, thanks, eh? Tony. Our original organizer. Yes. Okay. So. Okay, so uh, thanks for joining us Thank this morning, Tony. And we hope to have you sometime again. Tony, uh, your struggling was too much. Next time, just try struggle. to get it Okay, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Okay, Take so you all enjoy your time. Uh, it's BAM Talk. We have a lot more for you on the show. Do stay on. We'll be right back with you.